Regional variant Pokemon are hiding something. Something that they don't want you to know, because if you did, it would expose them as fakes, as frauds, as big fat phonies, and as liars. In today's video, I'm going to show you how the regional variant Pokemon we all love so much have actually been lying to you this entire time. Today's wonderful video on fraud and deception in Pokemon is being brought to you by today's sponsor, me. More specifically, my Pokemon remixes on Spotify. If you enjoy what you see here, consider checking out my remixes on Spotify and other streaming services. It's a very, very easy way to immensely support the channel right back here and truly means the world. Give it a look if you're able to, and if you are listening already, bless your whole gosh darn soul. With that said, let's get back to our regularly scheduled programming. So, in order to get to the root of the issue here and expose the lies that these Pokemon have been telling you, we first need to have a quick recap of what regional variants are. Regional variant Pokemon were first introduced in Pokemon Sun and Moon, and are new forms of existing Pokemon that only live within a certain region, as they have adapted and evolved in response to the environment of the region they inhabit. So, in short, all of these regional variants are supposed to be alternate forms of the main Pokemon they derive from, or that is what they would like you to believe anyway. The truth is, considering that these variants are indeed supposed to be variants, there are actually a surprising number of these regional forms that are actually the original form of the Pokemon, meaning that the original form we were first introduced to is actually the variant instead. This has been explicitly confirmed with Galarian Zigzagoon, and is heavily, heavily implied with Alolan Executor as well, but there are a number of other regional forms that have strong evidence in support of this as well, like, for instance, the three Galarian Legendary Birds. This was something I discussed in a video before the Crown Tundra DLC for Sword and Shield was even released, but upon its release, there was even more evidence presented that suggests that these forms of Kanto's legendary birds are actually the originals. If you take a look at each of their Pokedex entries, they explicitly state that the traits of these forms of the Pokemon are where they got the names Articuno, Zapdos, and Moltres. Articuno comes from the freezing stare of this Pokemon, Zapdos's feathers produce an electric crackling sound, giving it its name, and the name Moltres comes from the sinister aura that blazes like molten fire, according to the Pokedex. If the very names of these Pokemon are derived from their Galarian forms, that is essentially definitive proof that these are the original forms, or at least the forms that were first discovered. This also lines up with the other region they appear in, Kanto, being a region whose theme is technology rather than myth or legend, which contributes to the idea that Kanto is not their native home. I mean, think about it, if you assume this to be the case, that would ultimately mean that Mewtwo is Kanto's only true legendary or mythical Pokemon, since Mew is also known to be from another region originally, and this fits with Kanto's ideology of technology over mythology, since it itself is a man-made clone of Mew. Even the legendary bird's shiny forms contribute to this idea as the shinies of the Galarian birds take on the coloration of the Kanto variants, which can easily be seen as a sign of evolution, the first step these Pokemon would take in changing their appearance over time into the Kanto forms we were originally introduced to. So, not only are Zigzagoon and Executor's variants their original forms, but the Galarian birds are most likely the originals too. This is just the tip of the iceberg though, because plenty other regional variants are hiding this truth about themselves as well. Take for instance, Farfetch'd. There's nothing really in the games that directly suggests this, but biologically speaking, it makes far more sense that Galarian Farfetch'd would be the original form of this Pokemon as well. 
Since the leaks it uses are much bigger in the Galar region, it makes sense that this would be the place where a bird Pokemon who uses a leak as a weapon would evolve, instead of Encanto, where not only are their leaks flimsy and not really worth using as a weapon at all, but they literally contribute to Farfetch'd going almost extinct in Kanto, as they were eaten to near extinction there, probably thanks in no small part to the tasty leak they always come paired with. In fact, listen to this direct quote from an official Pokedex book that was published back in 1996, which was also kindly translated by fellow Pokemon enthusiast Dr. Lava. They always carry a plant stalk for crafting their nest when walking. A recent study also revealed the stock to be food for emergencies. Several years ago, the mass media reported on the deliciousness of cooking far-fetched with their stock. This news spread nationwide, resulting in a massive decline in their population. Additionally, this would in fact be a good reason why Farfetch'd would have adopted the flying type in Kanto, so it could escape the increased number of predators it ultimately came across in this new region. Other Kanto variants, like Galarian Mr. Mime, make much more sense with Galar as their home as well, since a Pokemon based on a Mime is a perfect fit in a European-based region like Galar, but not so much in a Japanese-based one like Kanto. And speaking of all of these Galarian forms, we might as well look at Galarian Meowth as well, because this could very well be the original form of this Pokemon as well. Galarian Meowth is a steel type, and when you think about it, that goes perfectly with Meowth's entire concept of having the metal coin on its head and being able to use the move Payday. Galarian Meowth's Pokedex entry says that the darker the coin on its head, the more it is respected, and the harder its coin is. This correlates with Cantonian Meowth losing its steel typing, as its lighter colored coin doesn't have that attribute anymore. In fact, we can even reasonably say that Cantonian Meowth, the first form of this Pokemon that was introduced, was the last one of its kind to evolve, because Alolan Meowth gained all of its traits thanks to being a pet of Alolan royalty in the past. Royal people would have likely wanted Galarian Meowth as a pet because it, as a steel type, was likely the first form of Meowth that produced metal coin-based money with Payday. It's even mentioned that Galarian Meowth once traveled with a seafaring people, which would give them all the reason in the world to have made their way to the shores of Alola. And just for good measure, if you compare the coin on Alolan Meowth's head to the one on Cantonian Meowth's head, you can see that the one on Cantonian Meowth's head is even lighter than the one from Alolan Meowth, which is consistent with the idea that Galarian Meowth was the first form of the Pokemon, and over time, as the species made its way into different regions, it gradually lost these steel-based traits, and as a result, the coin on its head gradually grew lighter and lighter over time. And going along with that, Cantonian Meowth would have been the most recently developed form of this Pokemon, and it would have gained the normal type in particular, with nothing special about it whatsoever, because in Kanto, it would have became nothing more than just a stray, compared to in Alola where it lived with royalty, and in Galar where it lived with seafaring people. How would that happen though, you might ask? Well, I'm happy to answer that as it actually brings us to another part of this big investigation. One of the most noteworthy traits of regional variants is that a vast majority of them are based on Kanto Pokemon. In fact, 100% of the Alola forms are Kanto based, and even with Galar and Hisui adding some from other regions, Kanto still vastly outweighs every other region here in terms of representation. 
During Gen 7, many people complained that Kanto was getting too much of the spotlight, and while that might have been true from our side of things, lore-wise, there is a very legitimate reason why this is the case, and that is the Safari Zone. The Safari Zone is a location where you can go to catch exotic Pokemon that don't appear anywhere else in the region, and Kanto's Safari Zone is probably the most notable one there is. Johto and Hoenn also have Safari Zones, and Sinnoh has the Great Marsh, but I think it's fair to say that Kanto's is easily the most significant since exploring it is a required part of Red and Blue's story. With this in mind, where do you think Kanto would turn to when it comes to stocking their great Safari Zone with Pokemon that you can't find anywhere else? That's right, other regions. None of these Pokemon we've just mentioned are native to Kanto originally. They got there because they were imported in order to occupy the Safari Zone. This is something we even see directly in the games as the only place you can get Execute, Executor's pre-evolution, is in the Safari Zone. So these Pokemon would have been brought to Kanto as exotic species, eventually made their way outside the Safari Zone by either escaping or by trainers catching them, and over time evolved into their Kantonian forms, hence why there are so many Kanto regional variants. Heck, maybe this is even how the legendary birds found themselves in Kanto in the first place. It also explains why Meowth evolved into nothing more than just a stray cat Pokemon in Kanto compared to what it was before in Alola and Galar. This theory is also backed up by the fact that every region whose Pokemon has a regional variant, before the release of Legends Arceus anyway, has a Safari Zone meaning that these regions are importing Pokemon, and those Pokemon are evolving and adapting in Kanto, Johto, and Hoenn, rather than the other way around. The two exceptions to this are, one, the Unova Pokemon with forms, but Unova is so isolated from the rest of the Pokemon world that its regional variants actually make sense, and two, we've also got the Great Marsh and Sinnoh. We haven't had any Sinnoh regional variants yet, but Sinnoh doesn't technically have a Safari Zone either. It has the Great Marsh, which yes, acts as a Safari Zone from a gameplay standpoint, but it's not known as the Safari Zone like those places are in other regions. So comparatively, it's kind of its own type of thing. So, I would say that's a pretty compelling argument as to why many regional variants aren't the variants at all, but since we mentioned Legends Arceus earlier, we ought to discuss that too. This video is being written right before the release of the game, so I'm only aware of the Hisuian forms that have been shown prior to release, but nevertheless, there are a couple regional variants here as well that are pretty definitively the original form of the Pokemon, like for instance, Voltorb and Growlithe. In short, Growlithe's name refers to stone, which would be referring to the rock type of its Hisuian form, explaining how it got that name in the first place. And Voltorb has a pretty tragic backstory that begins with its Hisuian form as the original, which you can check out with the card on screen to get the full story. Bring some tissues though, it's a real tearjerker. So while Hisuian forms are a bit of a different case, since their evolution obviously has to do with a point in time and not necessarily a different area of the world like the other ones do, there are still cases present where the variants aren't variants at all, but in fact are the original form of the Pokemon, continuing a trend of lies and deceit that these cool alternate forms of our favorite Pokemon have been hiding since the very beginning. Of course, this isn't true for every regional variant. There are, in fact, some who are actually the variants as they're advertised. But overall, this is a pretty blatant case of false advertising if I've ever heard one. What do you guys think, though? Be sure to let me know in the comments below, and leave a like if you enjoyed. Also, be sure to subscribe if you're new, and with that said, I'll be back with another video very soon. And until then, as always, thank you all so much for watching, I love you very much, and I 
We'll smell you guys later.